the saltwater crocodile goes by many names. The estuarine crocodile, the marine crocodile, Indo-Pacific crocodile, or simply the salty. Nonetheless, this impressive reptile is the largest extant species of crocodilian in the world, with the largest individuals exceeding one ton and even getting longer than six meters in length. These animals are an adaptable and successful apex predator of more than just northern Australia. They are also found in Papua New Guinea to other areas of northern Oceania, into Indonesia, the Philippines, and even as far as India. They inhabit both fresh and salt water. They do so using salt glands that are found below the tongue that excrete salt from their bodies. This is a trait associated with other marine reptiles, such as sea turtles, sea snakes, marine iguanas, and even other crocodiles, though only the American crocodile is found frequently in saltwater ecosystems aside from the salty. They are hypercarnivores, with their diet consisting of over 70% in meat. And they are also very opportunistic feeders, seeking any method of getting a meal possible. They are primarily a nocturnal hunter, hunting at night and will prey upon almost any animal in their ecosystem, whether it be other predators such as sharks or other crocodiles, to fish, crustaceans, insects and amphibians when young hatchlings, to birds and mammals of various kinds, including humans. Like many crocodilians, they will submerge and erupt from the water with great power and speed to catch their prey. This species is also known for breaching, almost its entire body out of the water to reach prey those above the water surface, such as roosting fruit bats. Their jaws are broader and longer than most other crocodiles, perfectly adapted for tackling large prey. Of all living animals, the saltwater crocodile possesses the strongest bite force in the animal kingdom, generating over 16,000 newtons, which is equivalent to 1.6 tons of force behind that bite. Unlike the neighbouring freshwater crocodile, salties are partially resistant to the poison of the cane toad, an invasive amphibian to both Southeast Asia and Northern Australia, allowing them to consume them, but only in small quantities. The jaws of a crocodile are lined with small bumps. These are called integumentary pressure receptors, which help the crocodile detect changes in water flow and disturbance in the water made by other animals. They average at possessing 66 teeth, all of which fall out and are replaced throughout its lifetime. A crocodile could go through over 3,000 teeth across its entire life. When ripping off chunks of flesh from a carcass, a crocodile will use its entire body to rip off pieces in a movement known as a death roll, spinning around in the water or on a bank to tear off the meat as crocodiles cannot chew, they instead have to throw the food back down their throats. They primarily inhabit coastal mangrove swamps in brackish waters, but also frequent offshore islands, saltwater lagoons, river deltas, freshwater rivers and streams, and inland wetlands such as the Kakadu National Park of the Northern Territory in Australia. They have the greatest distribution of all crocodilians being found from northern Australia through the Indo-Pacific and all the way to India. This brings them into sharing the habitat of many other crocodilian species like the Australian freshwater crocodile in the rivers of Australia's north, the New Guinea crocodile of Papua New Guinea, the false garel and Borneo crocodiles of Indonesia, the Philippine crocodile of the Philippines, and the Mugger and Siamese crocodiles of mainland Asia, potentially even historically coexisting with the critically endangered garel of India. However, despite its great range, their highest population is in northern Australia, with estimates between one to 200,000 individuals. Saltwater crocodiles utilise ocean currents to travel long distances along the coastlines. By simply floating down the currents, the crocodiles conserve energy, allowing them to move around if necessary. While floating, they will also outstretch their limbs to expand their sensory range in water to better detect prey in turbid waters. Crocodiles are more active and spend more time in the water during the summer, and will spend more time basking on land to absorb more heat during the winter. They are generally considered one of the more active species of crocodile. They are one of the least terrestrial of the crocodilians and spend a lot of their lives in water aside from coming to land to bask, and have been known to spend weeks or months at sea even being found to have barnacles growing on their skin. Though their brains are not that large, salties are capable of learning difficult tasks without much conditioning. Such examples include tackling seasonal prey following their migration routes. The scutor osteoderms of a crocodile's back 
create a wake breaking pattern that does not create ripples on the water surface. So a crocodile could be a few inches from the water surface and you wouldn't even know it was there. Males will reach sexual maturity at around 16 years old when they have reached three or more meters in length. With females, they reach this stage at 12 to 14 years at two or more meters. They will mate in the wet season when water levels are at the highest. The courtship takes place between September and October with eggs being laid from late October and November to May and June. The female will select the nest site along a stretch of shoreline of a river, a mangrove, or particularly in swampland habitat or wetlands, and both parents will fiercely defend the nest territory from rivals. The nest is usually made of a mix of mud and vegetation and is kept rather exposed to the sun and wind, and of course to potential scavengers such as monitor lizards, small mammals and wading birds like storks. Females will scratch a layer of leaves and other vegetative material around the nest entrance, which provides a surprising amount of warmth to the eggs inside. The female will lay 50 or more eggs in the nest and guards the nest for 80 to 98 days until the eggs hatch. But not all the eggs reach the time of hatching, as risk of predation and of potential flooding of the nest site can inhibit the success of the clutch. As in all crocodilians and for many other reptiles, the temperature of the nest determines the sex of the hatches. So when the temperature is between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, all the hatchlings will be female. And if the nest is between 30 to 32 degrees, a majority of the nest will be male. Though monitor lizards are notorious nest raiders, the aggression possessed behind a protective female and saltwater crocodile often deters the lace, sand and heath monitors in northern Australia, with only 25% of eggs being lost to them, with just half as much lost by Nile crocodiles in Africa to monitor lizards. When the eggs hatch, the female excavates the nest and delicately carries the young in her jaws to the water. Despite the female's intense protective efforts, watching over the hatchlings for several months, only 1% of hatchlings will survive to adulthood. In the last century, the saltwater crocodile was hunted for its meat, hide, and its eggs. The skin of this species was considered the most valuable of all crocodile skins. The unregulated hunting caused the population in Australia and throughout much of its reign to decline by 95% by 1971. The species was granted full legal protection in the Australian states and territories in which it is found, with Western Australia signing in 1970, Northern Territory in 1971, and Queensland in 1974. Though hunting does still occur, and throughout much of the crocodile's range, protections are quite ineffective. The saltwater crocodile has, however, bounced back successfully and is considered to have even exceeded its previous population estimates with the species now being established in a large majority of its former range. Habitat loss is another major problem that has faced crocodiles, with many suitable nesting areas being converted for agricultural purposes. This has in turn pushed crocodiles and humans into closer proximity. Crocodiles, however, are very wary of humans and often do not wish to encounter us at all, and will avoid interaction where possible. But with competition for food with people, some crocodiles have been classed as problem crocs as they begin to associate humans with food, whether they have observed fishermen on the banks or have even been fed by people and will become all too comfortable around them and have taken many lives in the past. Leaving croc country, you must be very aware of where you are and where you swim. If you see a sign like the one presented here, do not swim in that water because an unaware and unarmed human, like many of those attacked against a saltwater crocodile, is an undesirable situation and survival is highly unlikely, unfortunately. Croc country is a title used to describe where crocodiles, particularly salties, are found. Northern Australia through Southeast Asia is potential habitat for the saltwater crocodile and other species too. There is a term used these days called being croc wise, which means being educated and aware of crocodiles in the area that you live, knowing how they behave, when they're the most active. And I'm gonna go through a few of these methods to ensure that you remain safe if you're ever in the habitat of saltwater crocodiles. Number one, avoid water at night, dusk and dawn, because these are the hunting times of crocodiles. Also avoiding water after heavy rains and high tides. 
keeping yourself and any pets like dogs at least five meters away from the water's edge. Do more if you must, as crocodiles hunt their prey there and can accelerate with an enormous amount of speed and power. And spotting the crocodile would not be easy either, as their scoots, like I mentioned before, do not create ripples on the surface of the water. And if the water is turbid or full of sediment, the crocodile would be invisible to your eye, no matter how big the crocodile actually is. Disposing of food or scraps in bins rather than leaving them lying around can avoid crocodiles associating humans with food. Staying far away from crocodile traps is also essential. What does a crocodile trap look like, I hear you ask? Well, here's one now. These are used by national park rangers to capture problem crocs in populated areas. Lastly, avoid using small watercraft in crocodile areas such as kayaks, jet skis and paddle boards as crocodiles have taken people from such vessels. Swimming is also a major problem for you as you could be the fastest swimmer in the world, but to a crocodile, they will be on you in seconds. You do not stand a chance, unfortunately. But follow these, these major tips and you can stay very safe in croc country. They may be potentially dangerous animals, but they should be given the same respect and love that all animals should. One of the many things that the late Steve Irwin taught us, they are a marvel of perfected evolution and an incredible species that we should be grateful to witness its existence on planet Earth. If you love crocodiles and you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more species profiles on our planet species. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of animal I should cover next. And as for now, I'll see you guys in the next one.